Hello everybody, welcome to week two. Today is Martin Luther King's day, and so technically we don't have class. That said, every day is Blur's day, so um, I'm recording your video. I don't expect you to turn any work in today. Um, it is a day of uh, reflecting on Martin Luther King's message, and, um, and maybe just take a little breather. But if you want to jump in, you can jump in. You're welcome to. I'm not stopping you. I want to thank you very much for all of your participation last week. It was a pleasure to meet you through your emails and your discussion posts. I'll be grading more of your work this week. If I have questions, if there are any hitches in anything, I will let you know. If there's a bump in a submission, I will let you resubmit. That's okay. Um, as I said in the syllabus, uh, late work is, um, you know, we don't want to get in the habit of turning in things late, but if they're an hour or two late, please don't freak out. That's fine. If they're a day late, okay. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is discussions and other things that require participation from others. You don't want to let your teammates down. Your, your classmates may be counting on you for your comments or your posts or your peer reviews or whatever. Other assignments I can be a little more flexible on. So I, I want you to be aware of that. Not that I want you to take advantage of that. I want you to be on top of your work as best you can, but I also don't want to add unnecessary stress to your day. So that said, let's find out what's going on. This week you took a doodle poll, thank you very much, and I asked you when would be good times for weekly workshops where we'll, we will do more in-person lessons. Um, I don't expect those to be super long. Um, and right now it looks like um, the preferred times are Monday at 3 and Tuesday at 4. I will post this information in the announcements um, and we'll try it out this week on Thursday. Today is Martin Luther King Day, so we're going, I'm sorry, not Thursday, Tuesday, tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you can join us, that's cool. Also tomorrow, something very select, during our office hours, which is at 2, our librarian Tiffany will show up and she will um, do a little Q&A with me. I'll record the, the information so and I'll post it in this week's module, um, but you'll get a chance to ask her questions and say hello to her if you'd like to show up at 2 o'clock in our Zoom room. Her name is Tiffany Tomchuk. She's lovely and she will be helping you with your research for your middle assignment, but it's nice to get to know her now. In addition, you have a, uh, information from your tutor that is posted in here. Our tutor is Emily. She is lovely. She's a fine human being, and she has posted a welcome video here. I am also posting that in our weekly module because your journal will ask you to um, respond to some of the things that Tiffany and Emily have to say um, that you think might be helpful moving forward. Um, also, I appreciate you all sending me pronto messages. Appreciate that a lot. Um, I will use those occasionally to reach out to you, and I've already had conversations with folks on pronto. Awesome. Thank you so much for participating in that. I want you to know about um, settings over here. Um, I'm lying to you. Um, but I want you to allow yourself to get alerts um, about announcements and, and pronto settings so that you, you get, you know, you know that I'm posting something because um, the announcements go to the course homepage and um, sometimes people just jump into the content. So uh, I'm going to be posting a new announcement here that includes this video and our times for um, our weekly workshops and other information. So I'll post it here, but I'll also post it in the module. So let's go to the module. Um, go to coursework, as you know, go to content, and it opens to the last thing you looked at. So um, we're going to go to our first unit and into week two. This is Martin Luther King Day. And it's appropriate that we're talking about Martin Luther King because he is the um, superstar for understanding the rhetorical situation. And you'll understand what that is this week. The rhetorical situation is um, the circumstances in which we communicate. Now that's kind of a broad statement, and I'm going to talk about this more in our weekly workshops. 
but we have to consider who's the speaker, who's the audience, what is this, the text or the message, what is the purpose, the setting, and so on. All of these things work together <clears throat> in this complex um, relationship. And when we understand who we are as communicators, who our audience is as receivers of the communication, what the message is, and what our purpose is, um, we can choose our, the best medium for communication, whether that's a letter, a speech, a, an essay, um, a poster, um, a website, a blog, and so on. There, these are choices we make as communicators, given the purpose, audience, situation, and setting. All of these things come together in a relationship. So that is the broad overview. This is going to make more sense as you go through the module um, and so on. So here's the module overview. And this tells us what we're covering this week about rhetorical situations, the set of factors that influence how people communicate in a given time and place. <clears throat> and these are the outcomes for the week. Here are the assignments for the week. Um, you're gonna, I'm going to show you the readings in just a moment. You will have an exploratory journal where you're going to respond to the videos from our tutors um, and librarian, tutor and librarian. Um, you've got a discussion about yourself and your rhetorical situation, and um, you're going to do an analysis of um, an essay written by Tom Hanks, the actor, and you're going to analyze his rhetorical situation. This is going to make more sense as we go through it. We're going to begin our uh, grammar and punctuation um, lessons this week. We're going to cover comma splices and fragments. These are the boo-boos that happen most frequently in um, writing where we forget where the sentences start and stop and we have to kind of manage where the heck do those boundaries fall. And so we'll have a little um, lesson on that and you'll have two short five question quizzes. They're really short, um, but I want you to get in the habit of examining your writing for those boundary errors. And um, even though those five questions aren't going to change your life, knowing where the information is so that you can keep practicing might. So hang tight. We're going to move forward. The readings for the week are in here. Again, because I love this, I posted this. Okay, here are um, your chapters. They are linked. And I want you to read these. These are actually pretty short, but they are foundational for the whole class. Now, believe it or not, everything we're doing this week will actually serve you as we move forward in the class. Let me explain. Your first major writing assignment is to write a narrative, which is a story, a personal story, about an experience you've had in relationship to a community you participate in or wish to participate in or whatever. It, you know, it can be you know, the, in the community of single moms, even though you don't see other single moms. You might be in a community of um, um, martial artists or rock climbers or um, anything, right? It, it, you're, you participate in the world. And so you'll write a story about an experience you've had there and a learning outcome from that experience. And we'll talk all about that in next week. Don't panic about that. But that's the first major unit. The second major unit is the exploration of, um, of an issue or a concern or a question that arises from that narrative. And you'll start digging into that in service of an audience. The third unit is actually writing it as an informational report. Now here's where it gets interesting. The fourth unit, you will do a, what we call a genre translation, where we take the information from that report and we deliver it in a new way to a non-academic audience. So it's a, it's a transition, you're pivoting, but you're using the rhetorical situation. You are mo I know this is complicated. Everything I'm saying right now, you're gonna say, I don't know what she's talking about. It's okay because this is going to launch you for the rest of the term, and we're going to develop this as we go. Okay, back to the genre translation. Right now, I'm, I'm presenting this to you <clears throat> in a video. I will also present some of this to you in writing. You're going to read about this in writing. You're going to see other videos, and you're going to discuss. All of those are different genres and mediums, right? But we're talking about the same topic, and we're delivering it to the same audience. That's you guys. Right? 
if you have information about, say, a skateboarding community, and you write your narrative about your skateboarding community, you do some research about the political and social impacts of uh, skateboarding in the world and how it has gone from being kind of a, a wild and woolly sport to a more legitimized sport, thanks to the efforts of Tony Hawk and those people. Um, I hope I got that name right. Um, and that now it's, it's being considered for the Olympics, all that evolution. You did that research, right? Okay, I'm just making this up as I go here. Then you do, write an academic paper about that in your research report. Then you take that to the next level. Who's, who would be interested in that information? How can you get it to them? Maybe you want to reach out to parents who might be a little nervous about skateboarding for their teens and, and pre-teens, and you present a, um, a Prezi, a PowerPoint, um, a video, or a website that explains some of the benefits to skateboarding for that particular audience who might be concerned for their children who are joining the sport. Did you see how that worked? How we took the information that started as a germ of, of an idea in your narrative, did some research, presented it to an academic audience, flipped it, and presented it to a non-academic audience using a new medium. That's the growth of the class. Okay, here, you're going to talk, learn about writing for different rhetorical situations. That's kind of what we just talked about. That will make more sense as you read the text here. You're going to learn about rhetorical modes. Those are the ways in which we present using argument or um, inform, informational presentation or persuasion. Um, you consider your audience. What do they need to know? What do they already know? What would you like them to know? What do they believe? What, do, what, what challenges to um, the message would they raise? Um, all kinds of stuff there. There's a PowerPoint that explains this in greater detail. Um, you're welcome to look at this. This is a, power, uh, a presentation about analyzing assignments because as students you are in a rhetorical situation. You have to read what the audience needs from you um, and so on. You're going to read I Owe It All to Community College written by Tom Hanks and you're going to watch What is Your Life's Blueprint, a speech by Martin Luther King. And we're going to use that as a way of understanding the rhetorical situation in greater depth. Um, I'd like you to glance at least at these two chapters about um, the MLA style, because we're going to be formatting our essays using MLA style going forward. Um, it's, it's not difficult. And there is a video here that will help you out with that. It'll just show you how to use um, MS Word tools to format a paper just using your name, my name, class, day, month, year in the far left, and um, inserting your page number and last name in the upper right. It's not that hard. Just get you, it'll make it make sense when you watch the video. <clears throat> Here is a lesson from, um, that I put together for you about Dr. King and his rhetorical situation. This is the speech he gave to a, a middle school uh, group of kids in the early mid-60s. Um, here is a video lecture from me. It does cut off on the last word or two, sorry, um, but it covers all the stuff that you need to know about rhetorical situations. If you want to just review the PowerPoint, it is here. Um, but I do want you to pay attention to this. It will explain a lot, and it will make it a lot easier for you when you get to your discussion about you and your rhetorical situation. And again, all of these things are related. In this case, you're the writer. You have a purpose. You're reaching out to an audience with a message, but you have to understand the context and culture in which you're presenting. Um, I've given you a scenario. You imagine you're a college student looking for cash. You need some money and you need to reach out to three different audiences. You're going to reach out to your grandma, to your financial aid officer, and your best friend. How will you do that? Will you use the same written communication style in all three cases? I doubt it. So what choices would you make? And please explain them. And so in your discussion you're going to post your responses you as, as the author, what is your relationship to your audience and your subject? Who, what is your purpose? Well, it's to borrow money. Who is your audience? Describe your audience. What do they need to know? What do, what do they already care about? Um, how are you going to best convince them to loan you money? What mode of communication will you use? 
um, context and timing. And your tone and diction. Tone and diction. Tone is your attitude toward your audience and your, your subject. So, for example, <clears throat> a letter to the editor could have a tone of anger, or it could have a tone of uh, frustration, or it could have a tone of encouragement, or a tone of praise. You know, you think of tone of voice. Um, tone is that attitude that comes across in your communication. Diction is word choice. You can have high diction, which is very sophisticated, where you use very high flute words, and you sound like um, you've been to um, Oxford. Uh, middle diction is um, the kind of language that we use in public discourse. It's respectful, but it is totally understandable. It is also um, grammatically sound, and so on. Low diction can be slang, um, or um, it can be, uh, you know, very culturally based. It, it, but it's not. It's, it's um, perhaps not universally understood because it is. It may have um, colloquial, colloquial turns of phrase that would be understood within a smaller group rather than a larger group. So, what kind of diction will you use? High and sophisticated, middle and respectful, or or lower slang. So you think about those as your, and, and it's really unfortunate that it's called low. It's just a different kind of speaking. And we use all of these things in our lives, but we have to choose when and where um, we use them in an appropriate setting. Because I hope that makes sense. All right, let's move forward. Come on. Come on, Brace, Brace, come on. Click forward. Oh, come on. It's, oh, it's thinking about it. Um, so far, we have the embedded tutor in here. He, uh, her video, you're going to see um, Tiffany's a little later on Tuesday when I post that. So please watch those so that you can add a little journal entry. It doesn't have to be super long about first impressions. What is your takeaway? What do you think you're going to take advantage of as a student? Um, and so on regarding the embedded tutor and librarian. <clears throat> Tom Hanks um, is a, an actor, as you well know, but like you, he went to community college. And so he writes about his experience in this op-ed, which is an opinion editorial that was published originally in the New York Times. Um, it is significant that it was published in the New York Times. It is important for you to understand the context in which he writes this. Um, I talk about that a bit in the PowerPoint at lecture on MLK. Um, he writes this uh, while President Obama is reaching out to Congress to ask them to fund uh, two-year um, community colleges for all students. Didn't happen, but that's the context in which he's reading, writing. rather. So that's important that you know that. You're going to do a quick analysis of um, his piece going through these topics of um, the rhetorical situation. What do we know about him? What he's trying to accomplish? Who is he and why is that? <clears throat> why is his role in the world important to this conversation? <clears throat> what is the theme or main message? What is his purpose? What does he want readers to think, feel, or do? Why is he reaching out to this particular audience? This readership? Who are the people who read the New York Times? Um, and I, I've included um, some information about the, um, who that audience typically is, their demographics. So you're going to do a little analysis on this. Please write this using MLA style. Format your paper, your, your submission using MLA style. Um, there's a video, as I pointed out in the reading, that will explain how that's done. And you'll submit that by Sunday. Um, if you have questions about this, please let me know. And We have some information about comma splices and fragments. We've got two videos. You have some reading to prepare you and more exercises. These are all great practice. This will all prepare you for your short quizzes. They're very short. They're only five questions each. Um, you can take them more than once. But I want you to get familiar with the concepts because these are the ones that give people the most, biggest headaches. 
So I'm going to start your quiz here. That's on fragments. Fragments are incomplete sentences. Comma splices and fused sentences are sentences that are put together inappropriately without the right um, punctuation. They're just two sentences slammed together inappropriately. Um, and we can do some of this work in our week shop as well. Here's your closure. And just to make sure you covered all your bases, there's a checklist okay, of things to complete. Um, I hope I did that checklist right. You'll figure it out. So will I. So I hope that helps a little bit um, for understanding what's what. Um, and uh, if you have questions or concerns, you can reach out to me, as you know, through email, uh, through Pronto. And I hope you can join us um, tomorrow in our, um, our uh, 2 o'clock office hours, where you can meet Tiffany, our librarian. And we'll have our first weekly workshop, and I will do more with the rhetorical situation to help you guys out, helping you think about that a little bit so you can do your assignments. And we can talk a little bit about our grammar issues. So please um, come if you can. You get five points for attending. Um, and don't panic that if you can't attend every single week. It's, um, it's over the course of time that you can accumulate the points um, it, up to 60. So don't freak out. I will do my best to record our conversations. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions. Any, if anything comes up, let me know. Um, and thanks so much for sticking out, sticking it out for an entire video. Wow, thanks. Bye, guys.